Hey everyone, welcome back. Darcy Scott here. How you doing? Today we're going to do another great music review for a wonderful reggae and rock steady album. We've got more prog on the way, more, more just albums in general, but today we're giving some time to an album that you really should check out. It's Nothing More to Say by The Frighteners. This is their uh, album that's out on Daptone Records. They also have a single and an EP as well, but this is the full album. So this album came out last year, 2016, and The Frighteners in general are uh, a newish band. They formed 2010, and they started doing some recordings about a year and a bit after that. Uh, and even, even from those really, really early recordings, you can tell this band, they just have a really good appreciation for what makes really high quality rock steady and reggae music. Um, you can tell they've been listening to a lot of the source material going back to those old um, kind of Treasure Island, uh, you know, Cock and Dog records. It's just, it's just great. And uh, if you hear other groups from New York talk about them, you know, you can tell they've definitely been one of the more up-and-coming bands. And this album in particular, they kind of gained a little notoriety and that's partly to do with just how amazing it is, probably to do with kind of the, the goings-on in the membership of the band, and I'll get into that. So to start, you have Dan Klein on vocals, Chuck Patel on piano, Rich Tarena on drums, and then Preet Patel on bass. So you have a brother duo in there on piano and bass. And uh, just generally tell you before we get into why this band and album has kind of gained a little notoriety, just in general, it's a really good Rock City reggae album. Call it there. Uh, each member, each instrument is playing to the top of its ability. I mean, obviously, I think the vocals are kind of the, what stands out the most in the group, but at no point in time do you feel that anyone's laying behind. It's just great musicianship across the board. Now, uh, where this album and the band kind of gains a little notoriety is with Daniel Klein, uh, the vocalist. He unfortunately passed away from a struggle with ALS shortly before this album's release. Um, now, I guess coinciding with the fact that they were kind of a big up-and-coming band in the scene, as well this album coming out on Daptone Records, which is a really big thing, um, they decided, uh, well, I guess he specifically decided to kind of be very public with his struggle. Um, and because of that, when he passed away, I think it, it sent tremors through the music world, not just the local community. Although, of course, those who knew him personally, and then, you know, as the ripples got bigger and bigger and wider, I think more and more people uh, heard about it. But I think this album really does a good job of serving as a legacy for the, the quality stuff that he left. So that's amazing. Um, so we're going to get into the album, we'll go track by track, won't quite be as like the prog reviews where, you know, each track has a lot to say, these are a lot shorter tracks, so we'll kind of breeze through, that'll be great. Uh, so first off, the album's recorded in mono, kind of like a classic Northern Soul, or not Northern Soul, just Soul style, um, which is kind of cool. So track one, All My Tears, um, it's a very haunting track, especially the chorus, when you think about the context. That the album was released under knowing what we all know now um it's a really good opener very melancholic reggae which is a style that this band returns to predominantly throughout the record very <clears throat> mournful vocals mournful lyrics but still great rhythms great grooves uh it's kind of their signature style um the second track it's uh almost kind of the same context as the last track, um, but you have really good vocal work, really good harmonies. Um, oh, I didn't write any. That's nothing more to say. The the title track of the album, it's really strong as well. Third track, "Gotta Find a Way," which is very I'd describe it as very Heptones sounding, which is funny because this is actually a cover. Uh, I was looking at the back because it has the writing credits. There's a few songs that don't have either the band as a whole or certain members of the band. So I went went to searching. This is a cover of a Northern Soul group, uh, Bob and Jean. I had not heard the song or of that group before, but there you go. Bob and Jean cover from 1967, I think it was. Um, but it sounds like something the Heptones could have done. Uh, it's really good, solid rock steady. There's some great guitar and bass picking, really good piano work as well. Track four, What Have I Done? Another great track across the board. It sounds kind of like something Susan Cadogan could have done. 
uh, or I guess still could do, potentially. Um, it's really nice, plotting melody, very rhythmic, which is really good. There's a good organ solo as well, which uh, I enjoy. Track 5, Purple. Musically, maybe my least favorite track. Again, I wouldn't say musically weak, just not my most favorite on the album. Uh, it closes the, the side one. But it's good. It's a little over simple and oversimplified. I don't think everyone gets to shine as much as they can. But it's, it's alright, but you know, not the greatest. But then we go to track six. Uh, to start your B-side, there's Trouble in here, which is maybe my favorite track. It's um, kind of a classic sounding skinhead reggae rhythm. Um, and lyrically about causing trouble, or if I see you causing trouble, you're out. Uh, that's good. Track 7, Till Then, which is very old school sounding, very poetic lyrics, different vocal style and delivery than the other songs on the album, which is really cool to see some experimentation within the album itself. You don't always get that with, especially, uh, you know, Jamaican influence bands, ska, reggae, rock, steady, usually bands find their sound, they stick with it. Maybe over time, over albums they'll evolve, but you don't quite get as much experimentation within the album itself, which is really cool to see here. It's very breezy sounding, very delicate, very nice. Uh, track 8, Looking For My Love, which is another really good track. Lots of bass and drums on this track. Um, not a dub sound, obviously it's not dub uh, music, but it's, it's going that way. I'm sure at some point in time they can release a really good dub version of that. Um, Track 9, Hey Brother, very death tone sounding, very soul sounding, um, but it's got great organ work in it as well. Really, really good. Track 10, Gonna Make Time, which is a cover of uh, Sonnet Star, The Dapettes, who are label mates, which is really cool. And the song, I think, came out 2014. I, I didn't write that down, but I think the song came out 2014, which is really cool. It's something that used to happen... Again, they've, as a band, they've done the research. It used to happen a lot. Label mates or even just other musicians would cover fairly recent pop hits. And that was very common, especially if you think about folk music in the 60s and 70s. Other artists would cover other folk artists all the time. And it was a weird thing. And I think it's really cool that they were able to take a soul song, give it their kind of melancholic reggae sound to it, but just do it in a really cool way. That's awesome that they covered a fairly recent song, right? Uh, and then the album ends with track 11, Dispute, which is really nice closer. Described as very sneaky sounding. It's got kind of like a sneaky rhythm to it. It's pretty good. Uh, and just tight work on, on the instruments. This album as a whole, it's really, really good. It's a great album. Um, and I think it kind of, you know, gained notoriety for all the right reasons and some sad reasons, right? The the passing of uh, Daniel is obviously very sad, and it was very public uh, because it kind of coincided with promotion for the album. But I, I think it got a lot more people listening to this type of music, and this band in particular, which is great. Uh, the edition that I, I have a digital copy, the edition that I listen to mostly for this review is my vinyl copy, which as far as I know is the only pressing so far. Um, it's good, it comes with a download code, which is nice, although I already, I already had a digital copy. Um, that's great. Download codes. Uh, the back is just a simple sticker um, instead of kind of being on there like the front is. So that's a little unfortunate, but it's a really high quality album. You can't go wrong if you want to pick it up. It's really, really good. And otherwise, I think that's it. Just check this album out. It's great. Take care of yourself, guys. See you next time.